Hello everyone, it's the Crypto Cowboy. Um, welcome to another um, weekly kind of public video um, regarding crypto market and Bitcoin here. And um, it's Saturday morning, about nine o'clock here Chicago time. And uh, let's take a look and see what happened uh, this week. Um, okay, so as you guys know, we're following about three counts. They're all um, pointing into the same uh, uh, overall direction with slight uh, small modifications here and uh, we are continuing to treat this market from the premise of a finished second wave and as you guys know from all the videos i've made so far um past year and you know especially for the last five six months we were watching and, and monitoring the end of this correction uh, lower right from the end of december and it's been a pretty dreadful and long correction um which started uh, middle of june last year and ended in march uh, and there were several scenarios developing, you know, and we were just kind of patient and say, okay, let's see where this ends. There was a possibility of the market making another level lower, and we were looking at some kind of an indication that the market uh, it's about to embark in a new bull trend. And, you know, one of them was basically breaking the, through the top of this channel. So, you know, this happened here, and and now, I think uh, the chances of um, of a resumal of the uptrend here have have greatly increased. Um, I like the move so far, uh, and if we look at this green count, uh, we can start counting nicely uh, impulsive legs without overlapping. Um, so is this kind of stuff that we want to see um, from a trending bullish market? And, uh, you know, we're in the weekend here. It's Saturday. Bitcoin is struggling to break this 98, uh, 45, 98, 50. I think it will happen here shortly, uh, either today or tomorrow. But, um, you know, most of the other uh, coins have been, uh, have been quite aggressive and, you know, making new highs, uh, you know, almost every day. And, uh, you know, if we look at the dominance chart, which I'll do, uh, you know, a little bit later here, we'll see how, how actually, you know, we're dropping in there. So, you know, Bitcoin is at a slight disadvantage here and uh, looks like some of these altcoins are kind of taking front, uh, front row and front stage. Um, all right. So going back here. So the green count that we have, it's basically monitoring the fact that we have to finish uh, a wave one of this larger wave third. So this one assumes that we are in the middle actually at the origins of creating this third wave bullish advance into the price of bitcoin that can take us you know near 25 30 40 000. i don't have the exact measurements here right now uh, and i don't think it's really important right now okay so you know for this wave three to one to develop and to unfold we would need a five wave structure inside it and we're thinking that it's still the first leg of this move it's unfolding right now and that would be a wave one and um, the way this should develop, since it's a motive wave, it needs to be in five waves. So we have a wave one, two, and what we're identifying here as a wave three, four, and a possible wave five that's kind of sloping near completion. And this is what this green count wave assumes. And if I take this five versus one plus three, which means that we are basically looking at this uh, move as being uh, from the origin of wave one, distance travel all the way to the end of this wave three we take this whole move and we take the multiple of this move right here and we measure wave five and uh, for the golden ratio six one point eight multiple of this move this will come at about ten thousand two hundred and when wave three it's a normal wave here uh, which travel about uh, i think one point six one eight multiple one hundred and sixty one eight percent multiple of wave one uh, which is a standard procedure for the wave three you know, usually wave fives are hitting about, you know, 618 uh, multiple of this distance traveled between one and three. Uh, we have passed the 38.2 somewhere around these levels. So I think it was a little bit lower. So we kind of surpassed that. And the next target is this move here, 10,200. So I'm going to have my eyes into this area and see the type of the reaction that we will get once we get up here. And this will kind of coincide with a little bit with the top of the channel. So, uh, just because i've said this many times and and you know uh, guys that are clients that are part of the pro room know this as well uh just because we can count five waves doesn't mean that we will have five waves because this wave five can extend um and you can go basically into the five versus one plus three to a hundred percent or we can go even higher here uh, you can have an extended fifth wave um that's going to go up to about fourteen thousand five hundred, which is kind of the next projection okay so i don't want it to call any tops 
uh, into this market. I'd rather already develop and tell us, uh, you know, where it's going to stop by obviously giving us certain indicators and price action that we look for when we say that this wave is about to be completed. For right now, I'm in the camp that says, let the market go and, uh, you know, let it run as fast as and as much as it wants we're going to join it and be part of it we are already uh but it's uh you know it's not our job to tell the market what it should stop but i do monitor these levels um just so i'm um you know cautious and always aware where the important points in the markets are now in this green count we have this level that is the previous B wave or in a different count this could be an X wave that's about 10,400 or 10,380 which is the previous spike up here that we've had I think back in uh, it was back in October when we had those China news I think you know the move was was a little bit related to that so I'm watching anywhere between this 10,200 and 10,400 and see how the market will react once we get up here okay let me go um, to the next count which is our blue count so these are all daily counts. Uh, I'm not going to get into, um, you know, counts into a lesser degree. Uh, you know, if you guys want to see a little bit more of that, you know, you can join us. And, you know, I have a lot more um, lower term, lower time frame counts and explanations and charts and stuff like that. I'll talk about it towards the end a little bit more. Uh, but I'm going to focus on daily and just on the overall picture. So when we do, this is a blue count where we go in a one, two, three, four, and we're in the middle of some kind of an extended fifth that still needs to complete this wave one. So I projected that on the green count as well. But this one pretty much says that instead of having a one, two, three, four, and five that should complete here as part of a five, we are thinking that this is possibly a one, two, and then we're in the middle of a third wave of this orange degree, and then we should be doing a four and a five to complete this five that should be extended, or maybe even a little bit, uh, you know, longer duration. So this one kind of points towards, let's say, anywhere between 11,000 and 12,000 zone up here. All right, so, um, and then we should get a pullback in three waves, and that should offer uh, the next entry opportunity for a longer term um you know trade and advance into the price of bitcoin um all right the next count that i have it's the one that's even more bullish and it's called the red count and this is one that which says that with actually in a one two one two and another one two up here and it will take much longer for this first wave one to finish and it could extend the, it could extend quite a bit okay so if you have a one two one two that means that this third wave in green, you know, should be pretty explosive and strong to the upside because, it, you know, we call this third of a third of a third. Uh, and, you know, these are more like lottery tickets and, you know, they rarely happens. But I wanted to keep it up here just because there is a possibility um, that this this can happen. And the reason why that is is because I'm noticing, you know, less of a less... Uh, correction into the price every time we pull back as a second wave so if you can notice the orange wave up here and you can notice the blue wave and then you can notice the green uh, it almost feels like we're basically and, and I want to see this in a second wave of lesser degrees when we have a one two one two it almost feels like we're building a ramp uh, for an explosion higher into the price of Bitcoin and um, you know this doesn't necessarily have to be really huge but it has to create this intermediary wave in blue which is a third of a third and then do a fourth and another five to complete this orange obviously do a four and a five and only then we can pull back um, so this would be some kind of a wave one towards 15,000 possibly and then we pull back again we maybe slash the price of Bitcoin in half pull 50 percent and then go back up higher all right but for right now uh, I don't want to argue with the market I want to stay bullish I think all the indicators are there um, that we are that we are that we broke this this uh, you know pretty important uh, corrective uh, channel and trend line and um, you know the Bitcoin is basically embarking into the next bull market and uh, I want to go take a look at the uh, dominance chart here really quickly just so we can have some talk about that because um, you know there is some obviously some resistance from that into the rising into the price and the moment that would turn I think Bitcoin will have you know a much faster advance and a little bit quicker all right so uh, let me see what that is and uh, I'm gonna go here and I have it um, and I'm gonna run you guys through you know a few of the things that we've done already in the room just so you can see kind of how we run it but um, let me pull out the dominance chart here and uh, you know on this one I was actually cautioning and let me go here to a um, you know to a one-day chart um, and, and look at this so 
we were considering for a while that it's possible that this uh, wave uh, 2 needs a little bit of a uh, matching wave 4, uh, which is supposed to be down here. Okay, and I was going to be fine with it as long as uh, this wave four would have kind of stopped, you know, not much longer than maybe double this wave two. But we're already extended so much that I have trouble still thinking that this is going to be a wave four. So uh, this is one, you know, small indication that I have that I think altcoins will continue possibly to outperform here for a little bit. And the fact that we have broken through the bottom of this channel downwards leads me to believe that this could be a one two and then we're in the middle of this third wave down followed by a four and a fifth and then you know this would be a third wave then a four and a five so there'll be a still a little bit of a you know quite a bit of time to go until actually bitcoin outperforms this uh, this, this strong alt uh now if this ends up being and you know still a fourth wave uh but some um you know magical reason and this is basically a wave a down or a wave w so you have this wave down first and then you have this a b and c up here all right and this is just wave a and this is b and then we're doing a one two three four five four one or a okay so if this is a w for example here and i hope i'm not making this a mess so it's either a way a, a or a w because you can count this decline here you can count it as a one two three four and five can go back up higher and have this as a uh, as a three wave move up here and now we're basically coming down um, and the doing um, you know doing the next leg C down so if this was an A uh, and then you have this as a B and then this is part of the C leg uh, as we're finishing up this move up here where you go basically a one two three four and five and you could be basically complete uh but i'm not too happy with the size of this wave compared with the small wave up here so it could be just the first wave one up here right as this uh, as the c leg down and then you still have to do a two a three a four and a five to complete a leg c into the move okay um it could also be you know um it could also be a double zigzag like i said if this is a wave w down here this whole move up here it's an a b c okay for w then you have your x wave up here okay and then you're coming down and doing this as an a instead of one okay then this up here becomes a b and we're in the middle of doing the c leg down all right and then we go back up higher into the so there's several um, implications here but I think almost all of them are pointing to still a little bit lower into the price of Bitcoin so anyway let me just clean this up because it got a little messy but for me uh, to start considering that we have a turn into the dominance I want to see the price start to climb back above the 68 level until then I'm not going to have any signal I mean first at least to get back above this trend line and kind of back into this channel uh, maybe create some kind of a divergence onto the RSI, which is don't have yet, right? So as the price makes new low, I want this RSI to start going back up here, and it doesn't happen. So um, I think that, uh, you know, altcoins are going to continue to outperform here at least for a while. So let's let's keep looking lower here and see where we, we end up. I mean, I'm sure there is a support here. And then obviously the next big one comes down here at about above 57. So let's keep an eye on that. But this is kind of my thought process on the Bitcoin dominance. Now, let me take you quickly and just show you a few of the things that we've done in the room. And, you know, these are interesting. And this is kind of what you're going to be getting uh, if you decide to join us. The links are below and you know there's a trial and you know it's it's really interesting and you know we have a lot of stuff going on up there but for example bsv was one of the things that you know i recommended and you know it's one of the trades that the guys got in uh and basically you know it's another thing i think i'm i presented if you guys haven't seen this or you know if you don't follow me on twitter but i've put this iota trade as well and i'm going to go to it really quickly but um basically this is the bsv and you know we were monitoring uh and looking at this triangle uh in development and this is what you want to do when you watch the markets you want to see patterns that are going to give you a little bit of an advantage and one of them you know one of my favorites is the triangle because it gives you opportunities both sides either on the bullish side or on the bearish side depending on where it breaks 
So the way we traded this is, you know, we were monitoring the end of this. And obviously this E uh, part of the triangle extended a little bit longer, but we were monitoring and say, okay, if we, the market is going to start breaking this D lag, you know, let's get long on this thing and then target, you know, up here uh, 490 into BSV. And the, the way we come up with that is we measure the triangle. We extend wave uh, A and C, we pull up a line and then we measure from the original wave A all the way down to this line. And then we project that from the end of wave E. So this would be a minimal target into BSV following the break of this triangle. The way you enter this is you enter on the break of D and then you have the stops below E wave, which are very nice and clean stops. So you would risk about, uh, let's see, you would be about this much here, right? To try to make, uh, once you enter up there, you know, to try to make about this much. All right, so this is type of the risk reward ratio that you want to take into the trades. So now that the market broke higher and we even broke about this B wave up here, my confidence increases that we're actually gonna, you know, continue to climb here uh, towards, um, you know, towards our targets. And the stops have already been moved to below the swing low up here because, you know, I don't want to see the market turn back here because then, uh, you know, this is not our trade anymore. Okay, so this is kind of how we're looking at this thing. All right, so we'll continue to monitor and just move stops accordingly. And then the other thing that we've done, you know, and there was a, a, a nice one here was in this IORA because we were watching this, the end of this triangle here. It is a part of A, B, C, D, E. And you've had a, what we call a barrier triangle into the Elliott uh, wave world. And, you know, you enter on break of this D and then, you know, the market gave you a pretty nice rise up here from uh, what it was 30 cents all the way up to 36 cents. So a pretty nice, you know, profit regarding comparing with the risk that you would take on, on, on a trade like this. And since triangles are pretty much terminal moves, now we're looking at the correction to IOTA and we'll see, maybe it's going to come down here uh, to the bottom of this fourth wave of a lesser degree. You know, maybe this is just an ABC and we could be done uh, and move up higher. Maybe this is just part of a wave W. Again, we're doing an X and then another ABC and then we'll have opportunities back lower here. So we're going to continue to monitor this and look for the next entries. All right. And then uh, the other one was, um, I think there was a nice trade that we've taken in BAT as well, where, you know, we've identified a nice impulsive move up here as part of a wave one, pull back in two, and then you have another one too. And then you enter um, and, you know, you start enjoying this rise and we're going to, you know, take a look at targets here uh, in BAT towards 30 cents. Okay, so just uh, just things that we're watching and, you know, we're always looking for opportunities. Um, you know, XLM is is one of our other trades, uh, you know, that runs nicely as well. And the ZRX was another one that was pretty good. So there are there is stuff up there that that that's important and that you can still take advantage of. If you look at uh, Ethereum Classic, which I think it's possibly correcting up here, I have a count into the other platform on it. Um, and um, you know, so there are opportunities. Um, anyway, I wanted to thank you guys for watching this and I hope you enjoyed this update. Please hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. I Hopefully we can rise our content and get more people to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, if you want to give us a trial, you'll see the link below. It's a bot that will take you to our page into the Telegram room. There's also a free room where I'm trying to post as much as possible, different accounts and things like that, uh, or at least make comments throughout the day. But the busy channel is the premium channel where we, you know, all day long, we post, uh, you know, things about gold and oil and S&P 500 and a lot of crypto. And, you know, we take a look at Forex. So even if you're not trading all these markets, you will learn a lot about Elliott Wave uh, uh, in general and the way, you know, you're supposed to enter or, uh, you know, how to kind of read the markets and, and position yourself for a profitable trade. All right. So thank you guys again for watching and um, I will see you next week. So um, have a great trading week and thanks for, uh, for watching this video. Thank you. Bye bye.